So welcome back to the channel today. I'm gonna put some parts on this thing and make it a car. It runs, doesn't stop. So I got a box full of parts from Summit. And some other stuff. Tune-up stuff, cap, rotor, plugs, wires, battery cable. I bought these wipers. They're supposed to be like the originals, but they're painted. They're not actually chrome. So I might just take the refills out of them. Fuel line stuff, brake line stuff, carb rebuild. Um, I always buy positive and negative hubs, so the battery's not a huge mess. I'll try to put the positive one under the dash. This one right next to the battery. Battery hold down, air filter, fuel pump, because that one's leaking. I got some front directional pieces here, because mine are rusted out for some reason. These brake lines are for the coronet. I got headlights for it, radiator cap. I had a 10% off coupon, so I just ordered a bunch of stuff. Plus today, took the family truckster, went to Napa, got some oil, brake fluid, and a battery. This battery was dirt cheap, and it's, it's like 700 cold cranking amps and 600, however they're rated. But it was 10 or 10 or 15% off for Mother's Day, but you have to order it online, of course. So now that it has a battery, it's going to be a car. Something I can just get in and start without having to grab a battery from something else. All right, so first things first, let me get this fuel pump off because it leaks. And we'll start with that. So the only thing I couldn't get from like a parts store or something was the battery hold down. So I managed to get this off of eBay. So we'll get this battery strapped in here get more permanent. I'll eventually run the fuel pump and empty the gas tank or see what's in the gas tank because I don't feel like pulling the gas tank. So these are simple J hooks. You can just hook them in and tighten it down. That looks gigantic. And then I'll have to trim the fit. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Okay, first thing is get this fuel line off. A little rusty, a little crusty. But I'm not reusing it, so I don't need to pamper it. So that's just twisting the line. So I'm just gonna cut it. I don't need it. I got a new line for it. These cutters are the best. One fuel line. So my understanding is Chrysler developed the Slant 6 to give cars a lower hood height, which makes sense. And I also learned that this acts as a little bit of a ram kind of thing for the fuel and air mixture, but it sure does make it a pain in the butt to get to the fuel filter, distributor, fuel pump, coil. So let's get that fuel pump off. I can't even see those fuel pump bolts. This is gonna be a slow process. So I don't have to edit out all the swearing. I'm just gonna cut to when it's out. It's out. I don't feel a like a conventional like rod, like in the 
V8. Feels more like kind of a lobe of some kind. I'm not sure. I never really worked on a slant six. And when comparing the old one with the new one, obviously they're different, but does the arm show up in the same spot? And it's kind of hard to tell, but I lined them up against this to a mark. I think that paint mark. They get to the same spot. They just take a different trajectory. And this one is, you know, like a millimeter longer. But it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell just by looking at it here, but it should work. This one leaks from probably various gaskets, at least these two. I couldn't find like a rebuild kit, but I'll keep it just in case. All right, let's put this one on, see if it works. So I got the fuel pump on. That was kind of a pain in the butt. Just scraping the gasket off, you get into all sorts of weird positions, but it's on there. So here are the parts. Here are the part numbers as well. Cap, rotor, ballast resistor, coil. This is the fuel line. It's from the stop shop. That's the part number. Those are the points. And then these two pieces of hard line I got, and I'll explain that a little later. Plugs, and these are the wires that said they fit this car. There's eight plug wires or nine plug wires in there. So like for a V8, but I guess I can only use six and that would make it for a six cylinder. So as far as the tubing goes, this is a special kind of tubing thermoid comes with the clamps too so basically what you do is you take these two hard lines and this fuel line one hard line comes off the fuel pump up to the filter and they say put the filter right here behind the alternator which will shield it from heat and then you run the fuel line over the valve cover to the other 90 and that'll keep it because the stock fuel line comes in front of the motor in front of the water pump there's even a clip on the water pump so you get that heat transfer into the fuel line. I think what I'm gonna do is leave the coil because it works. I'm gonna leave the points because they work. I'll change cap rotor, plug wires, plugs, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, plugs and wires. the tube gaskets I have them on order they're on back order I guess that's why that's that there must be a gasket either up here or down low with these tubes I'll keep these champions around there's nothing wrong with them that I can tell you know. you never know the porcelain could be cracked or something like that something tells me I should change the oil well, I have the chance to get at that oil filter. Let's do that. Okay, let's see if this oil filter will come off. This horn isn't in the way at all. Ever. It's moving. Filters had like an anti drain back. Apparently not. Unless that tube has something to do with it. AC Delco PF2. Blasphemy. So I got the Wix 51515R racing filter. Comes with a fancy sticker. Okay, so I checked it. It's the same diameter. The seal's the same diameter. Just wipe that down and get it on there. I'm not gonna fill it with oil because that's that wouldn't end well. I think I have the 
AC Delco PF2 filter hanging around from when I used to have my turbo Trans Am 89 Trans Am turbo. I had that car for 20 years, I think. And I just wanted something with chrome bumpers. So I sold it, got the Barracuda. And then things got out of hand. In a good way. Well, this thing's got smooth sides all the way around. That is not good. Why would they even do that? That makes no sense. You can't even turn it to get it on. The heck, Wix. So the reach on these new plugs is a little longer. But from the Slant 6 forum, they said these are the plugs to use. So I put one in and turned the motor over and it's unscathed. So I'll finish gapping these and get those in. If you're ever wondering why I didn't get a gasket with your fuel pump, because I got two. Okay, so I got the fuel pump hooked up and I started running the fuel hose and I'm thinking, I wonder what's in the tank. So I turn the key on and the fuel gauge shows it's, you know, just above E. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna attempt to flush it out got some more gas so if I can flush it out where it's not drawing anything I'll put more gas in it and see how filthy it is when it comes out. Okay, gas in the tank, let's see what happens. Small gas. So this bottle had some brake fluid in it and I cleaned it out with the gas. It's definitely cloudy. I see a little bit of rust at the bottom, but there was some rust already in this jar. I have a paper one clear plastic filters, but I don't know if it's the right size for this hose. Let me take a look. Yeah, it's got some rust in it. Not a ton. I suppose I could run it with this little crappy filter and see what happens. I don't want to clog up my Mopar filter that I have. Alright, I decided to keep the points that are on there. Um, they look pretty good. The ones that I ordered actually look like they, they fit this. Um, I had an issue with ordering points for that Coronet. I could never get the right set until finally I drove to every store in the area um, so new fuel pump I'm just gonna run this hose right to the carb and put that filter right next to the carb um, I'll get the plug wires on it the cap and rotor and we'll fire it and see what happens so these plug wires had for the coil wire this piece and it has like a spike in the center but it only has like one little tab on one side and my guess is because there's no instructions you put that into there and then you squeeze it and I tried it and it's like the worst design I've ever seen so I had another coil wire so I just used that so I'm letting the oil drain I'm cha changing the oil I got this little filter in it's the only one I have at the moment and then we'll put it down and we'll start it and let it run and see how much rust and debris fills that up. If it's a lot, I'll get a bigger clear filter, probably a couple of them. I'll probably get a couple of them anyway, but I just want to see how bad it is at the moment. All right, finish changing the oil and we'll start it. Plugs, wires, cap rotor, coil, fuel pump. Got the fuel line with the stupid little filter new battery. Let's just start it up, pull it out, see if uh, see how filthy this thing gets and then I'll probably run to the parts store and get another filter. Alright, let's pull it out.
see really filthy gas so I think I'm gonna go get a filter I have the other metal filter but I'll save that until I see nothing in here with any luck all right I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and do the carburetor and some other stuff I mean, basically by the end of this video this thing will stop, run. I think the only thing it'll need really is tires. I actually ordered a carpet, an ACC carpet. I didn't know they made it for this. And I was going to get the carpeted floor mats. I had got those for the wagon and I got them for the dart. And they're not cheap. And what I realized I'm doing is I'm still putting rubber floor mats on top of the carpeted floor mat, which kind of defeats the purpose. So I skipped those because they're not cheap. They're like 170 or $80. I think the carpet was like 200 so you're not really getting a lot for your money. So I'll just buy some cheapo rubber floor mats for the front of that. Okay, I'm going to put this in the garage and... We'll get some filters. Rebuilding this carburetor, and I must be pretty lucky with carbs because that is the dirtiest carburetor I've ever seen. So hopefully this kit has everything in it. I rebuilt the two barrel in the wagon and the accelerator pump was nothing like the one that was actually on the carburetor. The top was different where the arm grabs it. So I I remember cleaning it up and like I think I oiled the leather I don't have any issues with it so we'll get into this kit and see what it looks like but that's pretty filthy I don't have one of those carburetor cleaner things I forget what they're called so I'll just have to do it the old-fashioned way okay let's see if this kit has everything I need Part number 1636 It's got that gasket, two of them. Need on seat. Check balls. I gotta know if that's correct. Yep, 
Yeah, that is correct. The one on the wagon for a two barrel was different. All right, let's clean this thing up. So there was a lot of this tan colored buildup. You can see it here. It was everywhere in all little crevices. So I cleaned this out as best I could. The carb cleaner didn't touch it. Degreaser didn't touch it. I literally had to scrape it out. And there's still little pieces stuck here and there. I mean, I could pick at this all day. Once you touch it, it falls apart, but nothing seems to dissolve it. I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know what this stuff is. I guess it's just varnish dried up, but it will not come off. I don't know if you can see that. Every time I pick at it, it'll come loose. Gas didn't do anything. Alright, so we'll put this back together. It should run better, at least. So the carb is rebuilt. I noticed a couple things. I didn't have 34 washer step-up piston. This thing right here under this spring. It wasn't in the original carburetor. And it shows the the pump intake check ball. Um, but it doesn't show this piece, which on this carburetor was on top. And the ball was under it. But I couldn't get it out, and I didn't want to force it out. I just cleaned it up in there. Um, and I think that's about it. Otherwise, everything was there. It didn't have a cotter pin, a tiny cotter pin. It had just these clips. One of the rods needs a cotter pin because it has a hole in it. But other than that, everything worked. I mean, they give you 100 gaskets, and I only need three. So, let's get this on. I did set the float balls to what it was when I took it apart. This should be pretty straightforward. I love how you can't get a box and wrench on this. I also got a cheap plastic filter. So I can see how much crud comes up through. These one barrels have some kind of weird throttle where it's, it doesn't just pull it. There's like a bracket and then there's this rubber bushing and this rod has to go through it. I guess just to get it done. Okay, I'm gonna hook up that filter run the line the way I want it with that plastic filter. Fill the tank and we'll start it up. That wagon I got had a tank full of rust. Getting it out, you have to take one of the, they have to take the driver's side axle out. You can apparently you can leave the rear end in, but you have to take the axle out and then unbolt the rear end from the springs and slide it forward. And I wasn't doing that. And actually the gas tank had a hole in it. That's another story. I actually used a... Um, in the Barracuda I put a fuel injection and the tank comes with the fuel injection um, sending unit. You can buy a plug for it. So I bought a plug for that because it has the neoprene, I think, gaskets and the little round o-rings on the bolts and you have the little thing that you slide in the tank it's a whole little kit and i just cut a bigger hole where the rust was at the bottom and put that in and that solved it i tried all those patches and the jb weld stuff and nothing worked and that's been working for years so the idea is when i see this running clear however many filters it takes i'll pop this one back on got a pex tubing cutter well. So every time I put gas in this with this can, it just leaks out on the floor. And I thought it was clogged or something, but I don't know if you can see that, but that goes straight for like four inches before it turns down. 
That seems a little ridiculous. Uh, even a funnel won't work. I have to get a hose or something. I don't know if because of the space, because it's compact. I have to look in the trunk. That's pretty straight for a while. There's my master cylinder I need. Let's see what the gas gauge does. It moved. Not much. I only put like a couple gallons in there. I would expect it to move more, but let's try to start it. been a few days we're gonna get back on this I've got brake lines brake hoses um, master cylinder battery cables directional wipers battery hold down headlights miscellaneous so basically the goal right now for today is to get the brakes done it runs, it needs to stop. So, jack it up, pull all the wheels off, finish up the brakes, and go from there. So the brake line has been pieced together. And I'm not even sure these fittings are correct for brake lines, but I anticipated replacing this brake line and possibly the front what I didn't anticipate was the fuel line. I had thought about it and I figured I should replace it, but I never really looked at it and I just kind of forgot to even add it to the list. So good thing we're just focusing on the brakes today. So I'm taking off the rear tires so I can get a better look at these brake lines and the fuel line and I still have to tighten up the drive shaft or maybe even put the other one on that I have. Good old Sigma. So to recap, this rear end came off of my friend's low mileage 69 Barracuda. So these brake lines on the axle are good. I just gotta undo that mess where the exhaust hanger is. I should probably take the exhaust off while I'm at it because I gotta replace that muffler, but let's get at that cluster and get that brake line off. I also eventually have to figure out the e-brake, which on the Barracuda goes up one side, the driver's side, and on the Valiant, it goes up on separate sides. So I'll have to figure out how to deal with that. So I'd rather use those Barracuda ones. They are in nice shape where these things are probably seized up. So this muffler shot, it is rotted out. This hanger 
I mean, I don't trust that rubber. Plus, the old hanger is still on here. So, I'm just going to cut this exhaust off. This rear hanger is... This rear hanger is hurting as well. So, I'll keep the pipe. I may or may not use it. But it's got to go. Alright, let's cut this off. It's literally falling apart. <laughs> Falling out from inside. I can't really shove up on it because there's nothing there. So I unbolted the hanger that someone added and drilled out the original one, which was a rivet, and of course broke my drill bit, but I don't understand why they didn't just drill out the original, they drilled a hole, but whatever. So I'll get this brake line off and we'll continue. master cylinder off. The rear brake line's all detached. I just need to get it out of this union down here. So I might as well take this off. Yeah, I figured the line would break. But I'm okay with that. Just a quick update. This thing's got disc brakes on it. My friend with a 69 Barracuda, low miles. He had swapped disc brakes on it, so I put the whole front suspension on this from that and the rear suspension. And I was just pulling on that e-brake in the back there, and uh, it works. So I think the cable running from here to the center is bad. Of course, so is my socket. Got a new master and lines and fittings. Pedal disconnected. The goal is to get the line that comes in from the top off, that's from the master cylinder, and then the rear line off. And then what I need to do is take the rear line and it's going to come up to a proportioning valve, and then the front will just go there, and then I need to plug off where that rear line came out of, or get another distribution block that's only got three. But I, don't, I think I just want to leave it as is and get this, these two lines off. See how well that works. Surprise, surprise. Does, does not want to go. Does not want to. The push button cable is in the way. I don't know if you can see that, but so I cut the line off with these, which are the greatest cutters ever. I have this leverage thing on them. The Craftsman makes a set like this. Now hopefully I can get a socket on it. Okay, socket is on. Yeah, 
wrench never would have taken that off. So I have a couple neighbors who all they do are, is run a leaf blower all day long from like 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it never really bothered me until I started recording things and then listening to it. And I'm like, what is with all the noisiness in the neighborhood? It's all these leaf blowers and the birds. But I don't know how much leaves you can blow on a May day. Okay, that's a first. Some kind of blob of something. Is that what brake fluid does after 20 years? I'm gonna set this back in there. Just so crap doesn't fall in. See, it has that nice blob of something to protect it. I should go film this guy leaf blowing. Some of them mowing channels get millions of views. There's enough content there, that's for sure. Okay, that fitting is completely stripped. So that's why they patched it. They didn't want to take it off of here. So that probably means I'm going to need to cut it and hope that it comes out, which it won't. So I'll probably have to take the front brake lines off, which will probably twist and break because they've been in there so long. I mean, they look kind of new-ish. They don't look bad. They're not rusted. I don't know if they're made of a different material or what, but... Okay. Things always take longer than you think, including leaf blowing, apparently. The bracket this thing's on has got some give to it, so it's like a false sensation of it coming loose when it's not doing anything. Well, maybe I'm better off. Shouldn't be too difficult to make these brake lines. I see some signs of rust. Can't hurt. Oh, maybe there. Cal drain. Have to address that. So there's my rear brake line. I'll use that as a template. It's going to be a little longer because it has to come up to the proportioning valve. Uh, but new plan. I think because both these original rear e-brake cables work, I'll take these Barracuda ones off and get these mounted inside, which I think I'll have to take off the shoes and everything. Um, then I'll run the brake line and I'll take the front brake lines off and make new ones of those because the kid's going to be driving this so I might as well go all the way here with these. And so I also went through and figured out how many fittings I need and there's enough in this pack. I'm not sure if this is enough brake line. It should be. But this is a nice kit and it wasn't very much money. Um, I think I got it at Summit, the stop shop. There's the number. OPS BLK 7CNF. So, I knew it came with hardware, but I don't think the picture showed this many fittings, so. I'm going to do like I did with the dart, where when I was finishing it up, I started at the back and worked my way forward. So the only thing that I won't do is the exhaust and the fuel line. I need to get fuel line. So I'm not filming changing these e-brake cables out mainly because there's a lot of swearing. Basically because you got to get all these clips compressed to get through where it comes through into the backing plate which can be easier hard. These were both ridiculous and then to get it onto the shoe you need this spring to compress so you can just get the cable on the shoe. Well, these e-brake cables work, but in order for me to pull it out so I can move this spring back, the front cable is kind of seized up. So I have to really work at it to get it off the little bracket up front so I can release it to get it where the spring is not tight like this. 
And then in order to put the shoe back on with the retainer here, I have to put it back on to the seized up cable. So I have to pull it myself, which is, yeah, there's a lot of swearing going on. So I'm gonna finish this up and then move on. So I got both e-brake cables in. So I was originally gonna lay out the new brake line against the old brake line and then use that as a template, but I needed to extend it up into the engine compartment. So I flared one end and I put it through, that's like an original, it's like a tube going through the cross member, which is nice, and the fitting fit through it. So I fed it through that and I put a piece of tape on it to keep the fitting next to the flare and fed it up through. And I didn't want to actually like try to measure this and get it right. I know it's going to be a pain in the butt probably to flare the other end. Just, you know, because I usually put the flare thing into the vise, but I'd rather have it the right length. So it kind of snakes down to the original T. I got a little plug because you're going from four, well, one input and three outlets to one input and two outlets because this does the rear. So these are the original style clips and I have multiples. I think it was only three. One of them rusted apart, but there were only three from that were under the floor. And the other thing I noticed was that brake line comes awfully close to the floor here where I need to weld this up. So I'll leave a little slack in the line and I'll protect it when I cut this out. But I need brakes. So we're gonna continue with that. Proportioning valves mounted. I think we covered that. I got the line bent and run and the new rear soft line on. So we're done back here. Of course I ran that rear line, it was too long in the back, so I had to cut off a bit, which this will be the exact amount that I'm short when I redo the front lines, but I'd rather be long than short on this. Also when installing these clips, you squeeze them, they push in the holes in the various places, and I don't actually hang the line here. I open this up and let it hang here because I find that it can pop out of here and I, I think that's how it was originally done where you'd mount the line here, the gas line and the brake line. When you look at the original clips, they're a little shorter. So maybe the line would go here because it looks like it might not slip out so easy but I mean either way it fits in the bottom here. And I think one of the ones I took off this car, it was mounted here, the line was. So that's what we're going with because it secures it. All right, onto the front brake lines. I'll pull the other front line out. I'm gonna redo this one as well. It was probably, maybe, possibly usable, but all the brakes are new. Like everything is new, so. Might as well make it completely new. Plus the kid's supposed to be driving this, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. All these fittings in this distribution block have coagulated brake fluid in them. So I imagine the lines do as well. I can't remember ever seeing something like that before. I'll clean out this distribution block because I need to reuse it. And get it back on the car. Got the new lines run to the front calipers. I'm missing the clips that hold the line in here. I'll have to check and see if I have any or any spares or I'll have to check the previous videos and see if I actually removed them in one piece. It was fairly simple, especially this side. It was a very short line. And this line was easy enough to run. So now I just have put the master on, run the line down to the junction for the front, and then run the line to the portioning valve for the rear. 
put the rod in, hook up the pedal, bleed the brakes. I'm working on this Valiant while I'm trying to deal with this. I had a brake issue, the brakes failed. And then I got into some more stupidity with this car, put a tunnel ram on it. So I think that video I'm gonna put out first. The only thing left to do with this is get the hood mounted and there was an issue with the holly carbs, which I went into in the other video. So it's been a little trying to find time for this car, but we are getting closer. Well, I'm calling it quits on this episode. I don't even remember what I did. I believe plugs, wires, cap rotor, change the oil and filter, coil, new fuel line, air cleaner, and I did the brakes. They're all done. They just need to be bled and I need I need another pair of feet here to do that with me. But that's a simple task. Next I want to do the electrical, new positive and negative cables, make sure the headlights work and the front directionals replace those so they're not all rusted and shorting out. I have new wipers. I just got a water pump the other day because I believe this one was leaking a little bit. And then after that, or maybe not even after, maybe before, I'm not sure how the order's going to go. I got the carpet in for this. So I'm going to be pulling all the seats out, pulling the package tray out, scrubbing, wire wheeling everything, putting some rust proof paint down, fixing the floors. I'll just weld up a couple patches there. Shouldn't be too much. Put the carpet in. I am also going to, while I'm in there doing that, clean the headliner out. Like I found in the Belvedere, there's definitely a mouse nest up in that little, just above the window there on both sides in the rear. I do have the Valiant steering center cap, but I took it off when I replaced the horn ring. The horn ring was broken. I had to make a key, because the key that was in there was kind of corroded. They're aluminum. So I, he gave me spare keys, but they didn't really fit, so I had to like file it down to make it work. And then after that, I'll do the alignment and tires. I'll probably have to address the power steering. I'm not sure if the pump is just empty from just sitting forever or if there's something else going on. I'll probably get a new pressure hose for it. But that should do it for now. I'm completely filthy. Top to bottom. I'm working on all three of these cars here this week. All right. I hope the kid's watching. I need your help to bleed these brakes. Until the next time.